So this is a bit of a later update that I'm doing tonight because I wanted to find out what's happening and uh, Assam has been giving the news, um, the latest news from there is that the civil defence, like the fire, uh, the fire brigade, have had three people out of like eight blown up. They've disappeared and that was them trying to help people who are in buildings that have been blown up or brought down and they're trying to help people and the Israelis have killed them. They've basically vaporised them, disappeared them or whatever else. So that is the, the, the Israelis now attacking the services that would normally save people from this kind of bomb, from like the bombardments that take place. They go into buildings and try and save them. The whole of Northern Gaza has now been emptied. There's no one left there. Now, they should be able to clear everything and go through the whole of the the whole of the area. See, there's no more terrorists. See, there's no more Hamas. See, there's no more anything else. Then they should basically let the people go back up north, if if they're not actually about to commit ethnic cleansing, mass displacement, and the Nakba all over again in 2024, with with the complicity and the support of. Israeli first politicians in Britain, as well as in America, Germany and France, where these countries are basically giving Israel carte blanche to do whatever it wants to do. So the north is now empty, as reported by Hassam, which means military operations should end very soon. And what they've actually said, something sorry, I forgot to add. So Hassam has actually said they're now looking for the journalists that have been reporting in northern Gaza. They've been designated as what's it called propagandists and terrorists. So they're looking to murder the people that have been bringing us the news, the actual Palestinians who've been on the ground, people like Al Anas Sharif, who works with uh, Al Jazeera, Hassam, and all of these young men who are actually fighting and not fighting, but fighting to bring us the news, fighting to make sure that we are kept abreast of what's going on. Because there are no CNN in here. There is no CBS. There is no BBC. No one is in the north of Gaza reporting on what they're doing. The only people that are doing that are Palestinian journalists, and they're going to get murdered now. OK, so that's what their target is, so that there are no more voices and it be a lesson to other people to not be reporting anything else. The Palestinian people who've, who have fled the north are now down Salah Din Road and are now sleeping on the road and on the street and they're not allowed to come back. They've all been driven out with violence, with guns, with explosions, with missiles, with bombs, with threats and everything you can think of. They have been displaced just like they were displaced in 1948. Now let's see once they've cleared the area up and there's no more terrorists, if they allow these people to go back, because just the way, same way as they've taken, allowed them to go out, they could check them for weapons and let them go back to their homes. But I promise you they won't. I promise you what they're going to do is lock it off, put some barriers up, and no one's going to be allowed in there. And then they're going to get Israeli settlers to come down and take that part of Gaza away from it and make it part of Israel, which is another international crime, which is another breaking of international law. I really do hope the West and the world wakes up to this genocide. <laughs> الخروج والنزوح عبر شارع صلاح الدين في, ش... في ساعات الليل المتأخرة في ظل هذا البرد الشديد الآن الأهالي يفترشون الأرض وغطاؤهم السماء جالسون في الطرقات الآن على شارع صلاح الدين لا يعرفون أين يذهبوا وبعد تكدس مراكز الإواء بالنازحين الآن باتت الأهالي في هذه الساعات بالشوارع وبالطرقات بعد تسعة عشر يوما من الحصار وحرب الإبادة الآن الأهالي ذاتوا في الطرقات لا يعرفون أين يذهبوا وأين سينمون هذه الليلة